Welcome to the High Value Sales Show of Eversprint.com. I'm Malcolm Louie, the man member of Eversprint, and today we're speaking with Ricardo Campo, the CEO of Endeavor Schools, a rapidly growing family of private schools serving students from six weeks old through high school in 42 locations across 10 states. Welcome to the call, Ricardo. Thank you, Malcolm. Pleasure to be here. Ricardo, you grew your company's revenue from $8.2 million in 2014 to $67.2 million in 2017, a 716% increase, and in 2018, you hit around $80 million in revenue. Before we talk about how you grew your company so fast, can you quickly share, or rather briefly share, what your company does beyond my quick intro and how your company differs from the competition? Sure, Malcolm. So at Endeavor Schools, we partner with educators um, and essentially um, partner with schools and provide them with tools, resources, and guidance uh, that they need to become the very best schools they can be. Uh, we are passionate about unleashing individual potential so that the students we serve thrive. And oftentimes in our sector, the focus is on, you know, purely uh, unleashing student potential. I would say that the way we differ is we're very, very much focused as well on unleashing the potential of our educators and staff. So we spend a lot of time on professional development, training, uh, as well as just celebrating all of the feats uh, that our educators accomplish. And how would you say you differ from the other private schools out there? Yeah, um, with, with our organization, it's, it's a very people-centric organization, um, and we're, we're very much focused on collaboration, idea sharing, um, coming together to actually exchange the best practices for schools. And so we give our educators the proper tools and proper channels to actually exchange ideas with each other. Um, we have uh, several committees that actually facilitate this across our network. All right. Now, you're different from just simply a private school with a lot of campuses, right? You're, it's more like you partner with, uh, with uh, previously developed private schools. Yeah, more so than, more than, go ahead. Correct. So we have a number of different uh, school brands. We have over 20 different uh, school brands. Uh, across those 42 that you mentioned. And think of Endeavor Schools as sort of a parent company that provides all of the resources, all of the tools, all of the infrastructure needed so that th those schools can run successfully. Now, the, the 20 brands that you have now, were those brands that existed prior to Endeavor Schools, or did Endeavor create those brands themselves and you uh, partner with other schools and you wrap them into these existing brands? They, they existed prior. Uh, there is one brand that we're in the process of, of launching, uh, which will be the first brand that we launch organically. All of the other ones uh, were, were started by uh, someone else, and we have acquired those and now uh, manage them uh, by our, our network of schools. All right. Got it. So uh, a little bit different from your typical practical setup then. Correct. So you grew your business uh, very rapidly, right? $8.2 million in 2014, $67.2 million three years later in 2017. And uh, this year, looking to bump it up further to about $80 million. Can you share what the three biggest driver of your sales growth? Yeah, so, so as we talked about, um, our, our model is a little bit unique because we do acquire a lot. We've been very acquisitive. Um, so I would say that uh, being able to identify great partners – uh, has has a lot of our growth. So, you know, the, just purely being able to identify great partners. Uh, secondly, integration. So really important um, for us to integrate these schools and to conduct really, really smooth transitions from founder to our leadership. And so I think we've done a good job of doing that and at the same time bringing incremental value to these schools. So being, being the best possible partners to these schools and uh, the second uh, important kind of factor. And then thirdly, I would say is, is the team, you know, just attracting the right people to the company um, and really having all of the right people on the bus as we, as we continue to, to move forward and to grow. So when you say attracting the right people, you're talking about 
uh, people beyond the ones that are in the private schools that you're acquiring? Yeah, it's it's really the support team uh, around that. Um, and so we have a number of folks on our support team that are not uh, at schools on the ground and uh, whose job it is, you know, to, to provide all of the additional support and incremental value. Okay, got it. So uh, just the three biggest drivers of your growth then would be one, um, acquisition, right? You've been fueling the sales growth through acquisition. And uh, you, you do that by identifying great partners. The second one is that after you do the integration, of course, you need to integrate them uh, into your entire system, uh, entire network of schools and uh, bring value to the schools, help them further. And then the third one is having the right team um, at the parent company to uh, really do number one and number two. I think that's right, Malcolm. I, I would add to the third is obviously able to retain that great talent that we attract. And that's been done through a very people-centric culture um, that we that we really strive to to maintain. Okay, um, can we go a little bit deeper into each of these three? Uh, you mentioned before the first one, your growth position by identifying a great partner. Can you share a little bit about um, you know, what is a great partner and how do you identify them and how do you make the deals happen? Yeah, so you know. When you, when you think of, of private schools, um, there are a number who were started by uh, folks who are now looking to retire or transition away from the day-to-day. Um, those, those are good potential partners for us. Uh, these are people who are looking for a great steward to come in and assume responsibility for these schools. Um, our, our typical uh, school um, is, you know, has been operating for a number of years, has a great track record, has a great reputation already. Um, and so those are, are great partners for us. Okay. And how do you find these people? So it, it is a, um, you know, it, it, it's a niche for sure. And so we spend a lot of time contacting um, school owners. We spend a lot of time at conferences where they might be. Uh, word of mouth is is really big for us as well. Uh, obviously, we have to do right by our, our partners and founders uh, and, and make sure that their uh, babies, right, these schools that they founded uh, are thriving beyond them. And so I think all of those are, are the ingredients that have really helped us identify these these great partners. How many such schools are out that might be a good fit for your company? There There are thousands of schools that would be a great fit. Um, and, and when you think about the types of schools that, that we own and, and operate, um, they, they range from, you know, preschools. So when you think about, um, you know, preschool centers that are focused on ages zero to five, and there are thousands and thousands of those out there. Um, and, we're, and then we have uh, schools that go beyond uh, preschool into kindergarten all the way through high school. And so there are also a number of independent, you know, privately owned and operated private schools across the country that at any given time uh, might be ready to kind of transition ownership. And how many uh, staff would these schools typically have? How big are these schools? Yeah, so it, it ranges. Uh, our typical school uh, serves about 200 students. And uh, in terms of staffing, um, our typical school probably in, employs about 30 people between teachers and support staff, administrators. Et and when they come on board to your program, do they become employees of Endeavor or do they remain standalone business? They, they do become uh, Endeavor employees when they join the organization. Okay. Good. And... Can we uh, talk a little bit about um, maybe one question about acquisition? Um, you know, I'm sure you've talked to many schools, and, and some of them perhaps decide that, um, that it's not a right time for them to uh, join Endeavor. What are the reasons why they say, yeah, this, I'm interested, but this is not a great fit right now? Yeah, I, I think um, there has to be a meaningful reason for a founder uh, to want to transition out of the day-to-day uh, and out of their ownership. A lot of times that might be retirement. Um, and so many times folks that we talk to aren't quite ready to retire. 
um, and, and want to continue to be very involved in the day to day. So that might be a reason Malcolm is just not ready for kind of a major life event. Okay. Is that rarely an issue of price that makes them say, no, not, that's not the right fit for me? It's more of just a lifestyle decision more than anything else? I think so, yeah. I mean, we, we are pretty uh, fair and generous when it comes to um, coming up with, with our valuations. So we haven't really had any bottlenecks there in terms of coming up with the right uh, price for, for a school. Right. Okay, got it. So for number two, you talk about uh, when you integrate the schools and making sure that you're bringing value to the school that you're acquiring. Can you give some, some details on what the value is that Endeavor brings to a school that you acquire? Yeah, so when you think about an independent uh, small school like the ones we own, um, you know, when there's sort of a founder that's bootstrapping and doing the very best they can to run a great school, they likely don't have all of the resources that we can bring to the table. Um, so when you think about uh, functions like HR, marketing, finance, uh, academics, um, we've actually assembled a great team of seasoned uh, leaders who bring a lot of additional guidance and support to schools. Um, and so I would say that's, that's, been, that's been big. You know, that, that's been really a way that we can come in and add value uh, and additional resources that the schools didn't have prior to Endeavor. Okay. So are you looking for the ideal school partners? Are you looking for ones that are already in class on, on all those dimensions, HR, marketing, finance, academics? Or are you, or are you looking for ones that have are more of a fixer-upper on the other extreme that have some issues that you can really fix and bring value right away? Or are you just looking for ones that might be in the middle that you can just kind of tweak and optimize a little bit? That's a great question. So we, we're not expecting the schools that, that we form partnerships with to have all of these competencies. And so we're very comfortable uh, stepping into a situation where we are bringing in a lot of this expertise. What we do need from, from a partner uh, school is, is the right people on the ground with the right mindset. Um, so these are passionate, you know, dedicated educators that are doing a great job um, on the academic piece and that are providing the best possible academic outcomes, those are great partners for us. We, we actually prefer that the educators focus all of their time on the classroom and on ensuring great uh, outcomes for students. And we feel very comfortable rolling up our sleeve and focusing on all of the other kind of back of the house things that I mentioned that need to be done well as, you know, as well for a school to thrive. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Now, is technology typically one of the areas that you help them with, both uh, technology from a back office perspective, admin perspective, as well as the technology they may be using for the education of the kids? Absolutely. We, we do have uh, an in-house technology team, and typically um, we assess the school's kind of needs, um, and, and what we find is there's usually an opportunity to really upgrade the tech kind of app stack as well as bandwidth. Um, so we, we certainly do bring that uh, level of, of service with us as well. And in, in terms of students, pr pretty similar. Um, I think there's more and more demand uh, for technology resources in the classroom. And so we do spend a, a lot of time looking into, you know, developmentally appropriate uh, best practices when it comes to bringing more technology into a learning environment. So if I were to visit a bunch of Endeavor schools across the nation, would I find similarities in terms of the, the uh, infrastructure that you provide them and the, both in the back office and the academic side, or, but it is, or, or does Endeavor kind of stay behind the scenes and I really wouldn't notice it? Yeah, I think that back of the house, absolutely, you would find uh, similarities in terms of all of the systems and processes that we employ. Front of the house might be a little different. Um, our schools are pretty unique, um, and we're you know we're we're partnering with different types of schools. We have Montessori schools. We have schools that are uh, Reggio inspired. Um, we have more traditional prep type schools, and so you will find differences in terms of the front of the house offering for sure, Malcolm. Okay. Interesting. Uh, thanks for sharing that. Now, the third step, the I guess the glue that really makes it all 
happen, right? Are, are the people uh, finding the right support staff to provide the value to the schools? Uh, obviously, you have a team that is uh, very good at identifying uh, partners to uh, do acquisitions. Can you share a little details on that? Uh, maybe start with your team that helps with the acquisitions. Um, how do they go about finding schools to uh, begin the outreach and see if they're interested in, in merging and in partnering with their company? Yeah, so we, we do a lot of uh, proactive kind of direct outreach to schools. We also partner with um, business brokers whose job it is um, to find new ownership uh, for folks who are, are looking to transition out of, of their school ownership. Um, so it's okay. a combination of um, kind of direct outreach as well as working with great intermediaries that help us to grow as well. Now, is it, you know, is it pretty simple to find relatively simple in all of these private schools? Are they a member of a association? Um, you know, is there a, a government directory of private schools that you can turn to to find them? You know, it, it's not as easy as you would think. Um, it's easy to find lists of schools. It's harder to determine which of those might be ready for a, a transition or an exit like the one we talked about. Um, so that does take a lot of patience and getting to know folks and potentially um, waiting, you know, for them to be ready. And so sometimes it may take many years of cultivating a relationship uh, before uh, a school actually is is ready uh, to transition over to us. So finding the schools isn't so difficult. Is it finding is finding the owners of the school fairly straightforward? Well, s somewhat, Malcolm. Um, sometimes when, when they are involved in the day-to-day, -day, then it may be as simple as just reaching out to the school directly. Um, in some instances, the owners may not be uh, at the school day-to-day, -day, and so that, that might be a little trickier. Right. Okay. And then the initial outreach is a simple phone call. Uh, you know, can I, you know, add themselves to you and share how we can help you? Is that how it is, or, is, or are there other ways of uh, beginning the outreach? Yeah, correct. It's it's a phone call, an email message, a letter, um, and again, just having a presence at some of the industry associations and that they may be attending. Do you do a lot of marketing to outside of the industry conferences and trade shows to let them know that Endeavor Schools is out there and an option to consider when they're ready to make a change? We we could do more of that. I think um, you know we we do very little. Uh, broad kind of marketing. We do a lot more very direct uh, marketing to potential owners. And I would say it's a, it's a very, you know, tailored, personalized kind of outreach message uh, that we, that we typically deploy. Right. It's a more of a, uh, you know, you do your research on the uh, owner of the private schools, try to figure out where their schools are currently academically. And uh, then you begin an outreach. And then I imagine if someone is in their uh, 40s and just started the school, the outreach would be a lot different from someone who might be, you know, 55 and have, has been running the school for the past 15 years. That's right. That's right. Okay, okay got it. Um, how about in terms of the uh, support side, the value side? Um, you know, how do you go about determining who you need, uh, how many people you need, and how do you go about retaining them? Yeah, so... It's all about what the schools need most. And so the, the, the way our organization runs is we, we don't have the, the typical kind of corporate team. Uh, in fact, we try very hard not to use for it. Uh, we have a support team and everyone on that support team has a role that's aligned to adding value to a school and ensuring that they are supporting the school based on the school needs. And so, as you can imagine, um, there, there are a couple of areas, right, that, uh, that we focus on. Uh, given it's such a people-centric organization and, and what we do is, is very much people-heavy, um, HR is, is pretty important. And so we have HR team that is ready to help, not only with integrating new people, but also to making sure that we're retaining great people at these schools. Um, we like to be proximate to our schools. So operationally, we have directors that report up to our chief operating officer. 
And these regional directors typically are helping to support um, a group of schools. So call it, you know, anywhere from six to eight schools where they're able to be very proximate. They're able to be constantly uh, visiting these schools and ensuring that the schools have what they need uh, to properly run. Um, you know, mar marketing is an area where we bring a lot of value um, and, and we're able to uh, come in and, and offer additional lead gen opportunities to our schools. Uh, we centralize a lot of that. Uh, but then also when you think about uh, converting those leads, um, you know, we, we need to train these folks on the ground on how to convert those leads into enrollments. And so we do have a, a CRM that we roll out that's pretty tailored to our sector. Uh, and we help with a lot of the, the training and the ongoing kind of support and follow up around that, Malcolm. Um, you know, you mentioned technology. Uh, we do have uh, an in-house IT support team uh, that ensures that the schools are uh, have the bandwidth they need, have the tools that they need to run the day-to-day -day and to manage the different systems that, that we bring to the table as well. Can you talk a little bit about the lead gen that you do for the schools? Yeah, so we, we have uh, uh, a marketing team that helps uh, generate leads to the schools, um, you know, both both digitally um, as well as, uh, you know, different sort of local kind of initiatives uh, that we help oversee and, and provide collateral for. Okay, can you talk a little bit about the digital programs that your team does for the schools? Yeah, um, so so we uh, spend a lot of time um, really on on both uh, SEO and CM to make sure that our, our schools' uh, websites are getting uh, a lot of attention and a lot of traffic, and so that that is a big focus of ours when it comes to marketing. Um, you know, the content piece is obviously very important. I think the challenge there is because we do have so many brands. Um, there's a lot of work that goes into uh, building the content for all of these different brands. And so our, our marketing team is, is very, very busy, as you can imagine. So each school gets different content then because each has a different brand? Correct. And what about uh, paid uh, digital ads for the schools? Does that make sense? Yeah, we, we, uh, we do a lot of that as well for the schools. And you do it all in house, or do you typically bring in some folks that live and breathe the the paid advertising? You know, twenty four by seven. You know, it's a combination. We have some expertise, in house and and we leverage a broader team uh, externally as well to help with that. Right. Okay. Good. Uh, what have you found has been the best source of leads for the schools? The ones that give you the best ROI. Um, in terms of of digital or all leads across the board. Uh, in terms of digital, and then also maybe uh, all leads across the board. Yeah, well, I'll start with all leads across the board. If, if you can, if you can imagine, uh, when you think about a school, it, it's a very delicate sale, right? We're talking about being entrusted with uh, the the customer's most precious asset, right? Their their children. Uh, yep. And so, word of mouth is is super important. And typically, the conversion on, on word of mouth leads is higher. Uh, this is when a trusted friend, neighbor, relative has uh, referred uh, somebody to one of our schools. Um, you know, typically, that's, that's a very, very high-value lead that we need to uh, nourish and, and have a really good shot at converting. Uh, on the digital side, uh, as you can imagine, you know, that's, that's a very different uh, approach where you know we're going we're going a little more more broad. We're reaching out to folks who uh, probably do do have kids and, and meet our demographics, uh, but perhaps have never even heard of the school. And so the conversion on those kinds of leads is lower. Um, you know, we do uh, we do spend a lot of time uh, thinking about, you know, different strategies and ways to get in front of the right decision makers there as well. For the digital marketing side, just given that you have 20 different brands, um, and it sounds like it, 
one of the challenges is that you, you're going to have 20 different ideal uh, parent profiles that you're targeting as well. Yeah, would you, would you... that's a good point, Malcolm. There's there's different personas that we uh, that we need to obviously market to and cater to. Right. How does your team deal with that? Right. I mean, it's not even just twenty different personas. Right? You have twenty different brands, but then uh, within each of those brands, you probably have multiple personas within them as well. I mean, it sounds <laughs> quite a bit of a of a personalities to keep in mind when you're developing the marketing plans. That's absolutely right. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I mean, our brands, uh, appeal to different, uh, folks for different reasons. And so ultimately we do need to keep track of each school's secret sauce, right? Their value proposition, um, and make sure that it, it speaks to the people in market. Um, so it is a lot to keep track of for sure. Yeah. Now, do you find that there's a commonality among all the private schools? in terms of uh, and all the different customer avatars you have? If you have to choose like the one biggest reason why people uh, choose the Endeavor schools above all the other options that they have, what would that one reason be? What pain point does the Endeavor schools uh, solve for them? You know, I, I would probably, to answer that question, I would probably locate the, um, the schools a little bit. So when you think about the early education centers, the, the preschools, um, th- those parents, I would say they're, you know, they're, they're really looking for, um, you know, trusted, uh, caregivers and early educators, uh, that they can entrust their, their children with. And so they're, they're very much looking for a high level of, of care and dedication. Uh, they're very much looking for safety and security. Um, when you go beyond, uh, preschool and, and into kindergarten, elementary school, middle school, high school, um, I would say that that parents shift a lot of their uh, attention to to academic well. So obviously they want a very safe and secure school with with people who who care at the school about their children. Um, they're very much also looking for uh, academic success uh, at that level as well. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. How about cons- how much does that pay- play a role in terms of? Uh, the school is being convenient to where they live, to where they work, easy drop off, easy pick up. It plays a big role. So obviously proximity to, to people's homes is important when, when you think about making making a decision for school. I would say it's it's more important, again, with the early education centers, um, a little less important when you think about uh, elementary, middle, high school. I think there people are usually willing to travel a little more to get to the right school. Right. Now, do private schools in your network typically provide bus options as well? There, there is some transportation that we, that we offer as well, um, though I would say that uh, it's, it's a, a smaller percentage of the population that opts into our transportation. Right. Now, do you view the public schools as your competitors, or is this a totally different market, given how your schools are teach the same way? No, for sure, our, our you know public schools are, are always a substitute and a strong competitor, um, and and there are fantastic public schools out there that do a great job, uh, and so obviously it's hard to compete with free. So I would say that um, you know public schools is, is a great option. In fact, ninety percent of the population opts into that option. Um, there's also charter schools, Malcolm, which are. Uh, publicly funded but privately managed, so they are also competition for us. Um, there are all kinds of specialty schools, religious schools, and so there's no lack of competition. Um, really, you know, our, our job is to run the very, very best programs possible um, and ensure that we're bringing incremental value above and beyond what these families can get for free in their local communities. Right. For 2019, can you share some details on your plan? Yeah, so 2019 is going to be a great year for us. We're very excited. Um, we're actually launching our own brand, which will be called Endeavor Montessori. Um, these will be uh, new schools that uh, we will be launching uh, from the ground up. And we've got um, two right now in development. So we're really excited about that. 
Um, we plan to continue to add uh, existing schools as well via acquisition. Um, and so there, there will be kind of a, a dual effort of acquiring uh, as well as ramping up brand new schools. When you acquire schools, how do you typically fund that? Are you leveraging up your balance sheet, borrowing, and, and using that to, to uh, buy the school, so the uh, equity swap type situation? How, how do you typically fund your acquisitions? We've got great e equity partners and, and debt partners. And so, um, you know, we've got two different types of capital partners that, that we uh, utilize to actually fund acquisitions. So typically when someone uh, partners up with you, are they just receiving a cash payout or are they receiving equity in, in Endeavor, that sort of type of uh, arrangement? It's a cash payout. For the new brand, the Endeavor Montessori uh, schools that you're putting out, what's your marketing plan for them? Yeah, so we're, we're really excited about this one. Um, we've got, within our 42 schools, we've got about two Montessori schools. And these, these 20 Montessori schools, um, you know, have been operating successfully for many, many years, uh, in some cases north of 30 years. And so we, we've got a ton of great people um, that understand Montessori really well. And these Montessorians um, really leave and breathe this philosophy. And so our plan with Endeavor Montessori is really to leverage all of this internal know and capture all of the different best practices that we see across all of these different brands and bring them into one brand, one school type. Um, and so that's, that's really exciting for us. And so we're spending a lot of time really capturing um, what makes all of these different Montessori schools great uh, and, and kind of uh, consolidating it all into one brand. Okay. And so your Montessori schools would be rebranded as Endeavor Montessori or they will continue with their existing name? The, the existing schools will continue to operate as they have been. Um, and so the, the, our new kind of de novo Montessori schools take on the new brand. Great. And how are you going to get the word out? How are you going to build the brand? How do you know that there's a, there's a new Montessori school out, the, out there and available? Yeah, that, that, uh, that is going to be a big, big uh, challenge, but a fun one. We're excited about it. Um, we, we have a, a marketing team that's working hard on, um, on this very effort. And um, it's going to be a combination of, of different activities, obviously, uh, digital, but also a lot of, of PR events and a lot of local marketing will be necessary as well. Now, when you're picking your locations for new schools, I take it you're probably focused on areas where there are no Montessori options. Could it be the first mover? Or will you take the other tack where you'll see a successful Montessori program, you know there's a market for, those, for that program, hence you will be located not too far away from that school. That's a great question. Um, Montessori has been growing quite a lot, and um, it's it's kind of difficult these days to find a, a market uh, that that doesn't have some sort of Montessori presence. And so we fully expect for there to be other Montessori options in the markets that we're targeting. Um, and so I think I think Malcolm, you know, we want to be careful um, to not saturate the market with with Montessori, uh, but we do see a, a lot of interest in this learning model. Uh, and so we're excited about that. We do a lot of supply and demand analyses. Um, we're obviously focused on markets that are growing, um, especially around, you know, families uh, and young children. And so be careful when it comes to site selection, just to make sure that there's going to be sufficient demand to fill up our schools. Uh, what do you see as your biggest challenge for growing your Montessori, your new Montessori brand? What's the name of the brand? Is it going to be called Endeavor Montessori or something else? Yes, in, in Endeavor Montessori Schools will be the brand. Okay. So what's the biggest challenge you see for on the marketing and sales front to to get lift off? You know, it, it, it's, it's a very local. Uh, so when you think about a school, um, you know, you mentioned proximity and how important that is. Um, we, we need to get really, really proximate. 
Um, and so when, when you have sort of a, a, a national network of schools um, and a centralized marketing force, you know, I think that'll be the biggest challenge is just making sure that we can leverage great folks on the ground that can complement our centralized marketing efforts. Um, and so that partnership is very important between the folks on the ground and the marketing experts that, that we bring to the table. Right. Now, I see when I was doing my uh, background research, you have over a thousand employees right now. What's the, what's the total headcount right now? Uh, yeah, we're, we're at 1,600. 1,600. Wow, way over the number I have there. So 1,600 employees. How, how many of those are in your head office, in the parent company that provides all of your support services? Yeah, we've got, we've got roughly 40, uh, 40 people on the support team. Okay. Right. So, uh, so we, and another question kind of it was on the back of my mind. I should have asked it earlier. As you acquire new companies, you mentioned how you have a support team for uh, each school. So that you need to scale up on your support side as well as you increase your, your uh, network? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Is there a magic number for how many support staff you need per school? Well, it, it's, uh, it's probably not linear, but right now we're, we're running at about a one-to-one ratio. Okay, so you acquire one new partner school, so right now you need to acquire one additional support staff to go with it. Kind of, Malcolm. Um, what, what's hard about answering that question is a, a lot of times the additional support staff uh, is lumpy, so it's based on what's most needed. And so it, it doesn't, it's not, you know, a, a, a magical kind of acquire school at a person. Um, it's really more, you know, as we're acquiring, you know, what is our plan for the next 12 months around additional support staff within the different departments. Um, so I'm just using a very rough kind of ratio uh, based on what we have today. Sure. Um, three last questions for you. So, you know, um, imagine someone's on a, uh, on a freeway somewhere and you have a billboard running. What, and typically people only see a billboard for six seconds before they drive by it. What is the Endeavor School's billboard message, the six-second message? We are, we are passionate about unleashing individual potential so the students we serve thrive. That's, that's our why, Malcolm. That's why we do this. That's why we get out of bed in the morning. Okay, so, uh, so we'll, that's, that's quite a bit to fill, quite a bit to put on a billboard. So what would you say? We help students thrive? Would that be the message? We, we unleash individual potential. All right, that's a good one. And my final, my final two questions for you: Who are your ideal partners, your ideal private schools to uh, to join your network? And what's the best way for the owners of those schools to reach out to your team? Yeah, so we're we're looking for um, well-established uh, private schools, anywhere from from um, you know serving infants through high school uh, that have a great team on the ground that have been, you know, building up their community successfully, the great track record, uh, and are ready to transition. So these are, are founders who are ready to retire or have any kind of life event that would require them to transition the ownership of that school. Uh, it'd be great partners for us. And what, what I would tell those potential partners is that uh, we, we really do want to be the best possible stewards of these schools. Um, obviously, the founder exits, it creates a huge leadership gap. And so we work very, very diligently to fill that gap as best we can. And in terms of contacting us, uh, we have our website, uh, www.endeavorschools.com, and there's some information there for potential partners, uh, as well as contacting me directly. My email address is r. C-A-M-P-O at EndeavorSchools.com. All right. Fantastic. Thanks so much for joining our show today, Ricardo, and sharing how you grew your company's uh, sales so rapidly. Perfect, Malcolm. Thank you so much for the invite. For interviews with other fast-growing, high-value sales companies, or to learn how we can accelerate your firm's high-value sales through automation, visit Eversprint.com.